Saints, and our topic for this afternoon is the heavenly encounter. Do you have an encounter with the Lord, saints? Glory be to God. And saints, we're reading from Acts, the book of Acts, um, Acts 16, 11 to 34, and it reads thus. Therefore, from losing trust, we came with a straight course to Samogritia. The next day, Neapolis and from the Philippines, which is the chief city of the part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days, and on the second, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer work was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto women which was retorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Eteria, which worshipped God. Heard of Susa, the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of her. And when she was baptized, and her household, he besought us, and saying, If ye judge me, Faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much grain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. And did, this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he did him out the same hour. And when he master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, he caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. Paul and Silas are beaten and jailed, and brought them to the ministers, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe in the Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. 
who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Conversion of the prison keeper. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, and so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone band together were loosened. And together the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang into the cave, trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy host. <clears throat> and I spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized. He and all his straightway, and when he had brought them into his house, he set me before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his hopes. Amen. This is what I heard. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, saints, we all know that God works in mysterious ways, right? God providentially works to draw different people to himself through the same gospel it is one gospel but god uses gospel to draw people to him and god works through his providence to draw different people in different circumstances to him hallelujah god's providence refer to the fact that he is sovereignly working behind the scenes even when we are not aware of it but is always there is always in control saints to work all things after the counsel of his will in other words nothing happened by chance even though it may seem to us to be by chance hallelujah some people will char characterize it as you are they would say you are a lucky person but i don't use that word i would say you are a blessed person Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. So says, you are a blessed person. Glory to God. So, by chance, certainly the salvation of a soul whom God has predestined, predestined before the foundation of this world ephesians 1 verse 45 since i might not read all the scripture so you can jot it down and read on your own time is not left to chance take the case of yourself call your name your sheep glory be to god take that chance saints glory be to god hallelujah and the term, hallelujah, Jesus. Now since the, the Thyatheria represents or it translates or the meaning of a whisperer of God. Hallelujah. It's a whisperer. Means that she or he was a Gentile 
who came to believe in the God of the Jews, although she, was, she or he was not yet full. So Judas is glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You might call that Paul would have preached in Lydia's home or in our in our region, but the Holy Spirit forbade him at that time. Glory be to God. Then he wanted to go in Bithynia, but again the Spirit says no. Finally, through the vision, wait on God says. And we are reading from the book of Acts. We read chapter 16, 16 verse 6, right? So then, it through a vision of the Macedonian men calling for help, Paul, the missionary team, went to Europe. Hallelujah. Luke report that ran a straight course. Hallelujah. Which means that the wind was favorable and go to their destination in two. Hallelujah. Later it would take about five going the other direction. Verse 20. Luke Acts 20 verse 6 Surely God was with them They landed at the port city of Nepolis Glory be to God Walked to the 10 miles of Philippi And no doubt wondering when God would introduce them Hallelujah to this Macedonian man who was ready to receive Christ. God's timing, saints, is not our timing. Hallelujah. And he will use his words to pull. Madness to steal to pull. Hallelujah. They stayed in Philippi for some days but no macedonian man hallelujah materialized on the sabbath day paul said let's find out where the jews gather for worship hallelujah philippi lacked the 10 jewish men in a town that it took to form a synagogue at the missionary team wandered down by the rivers hallelujah the songwriter sang by the rivers of babylon where they sat down and there he went do you remember zion glory to god they all sat at the river they came upon a small group of women praying Paul and his team sat down to explain the gospel to this small group of women. Hallelujah. The Lord opened Lydia's heart along with the hearts of those in her household to respond to the gospel. Acts 16 verse 14. And they got saved. They all got saved. Jesus called man unto himself. Jesus used us to save the lost, to pull them to his self. Hallelujah, saints, it doesn't matter what the circumstances is. God sees all things and he will take you out of wrong situation. He will pull you unto himself. Our God is a jealous God and he will not share you with any other. 
you always have to put the Lord at the head, at the top. He is a head above the husband. The husband is above the wife. And the wife should submit. And the husband should love the wife as Christ loves the church. So the Lord brought Lydia from the western Turkey to Philippi. And Paul from wanting to go into the western Turkey to Philippi and brought them together here. You see how God works, saints? So that she could get saved. If you had asked Paul if his intention was to start a church with a group of women, I am sure he would have said no way. But it was God's ways to begin the church in the Europe. Hallelujah. The Macedonian man turned out to be an Asian woman. Glory be to God. Then God orchestrated another at the team was going to this place of prayer, probably to give further to those who believe, further teaching to those who believe. A slave girl with a spirit of divination met the guard. Hallelujah. At Dill. Hallelujah. Jesus. Delphinic Arco in the central Greece. Hallelujah. Apollo so supposedly killed this snake and the snake spirit dwell in the priest the priestess there hallelujah so a python spirit referred to a spirit of enable someone to predict the future this is the slave girl hallelujah was being used by her owner for further telling much to the fortunes of the owner glory be to god this girl kept following after the missionary, crying, Oh, she need help. These men are servants of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. They are like the voice crying out in the wilderness. Make he the way straight hallelujah Acts 16 verse 17 in this continue for many days paul become greatly annoyed so he commanded the spirit in the name of jesus christ to come out of her hallelujah saints we're not supposed to play with demons and devils cast them out let them go back to the abyss hallelujah don't play with them they have no place here. God created the herd for us, not them. Hallelujah. So Paul was annoyed. Hallelujah. So he cast out that serpent spirit out of the girl. Hallelujah. And instantly Luke does not tell us if this girl got saved but we can hope that since her owner had no future for her that the church would have taken her in that she didn't meet the Lord Jesus Christ how she did meet the Lord Jesus Christ Hallelujah. so apparently says she got saved hallelujah she got saved luke is interested in the story because it shows how the lord got paul and silas to their next divine appointment which is in the philippian jailer and the entire Jail house full of prisoners again. Glory be to the Lamb of God. 
Hallelujah. So saints, and if you read the words in the Bible, in Acts, Hallelujah. It specifically states that those who got baptized had believed in God. Acts 16 verse 34. You have an you have to assume infant baptism and pray it in your own time. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Now, God used the same gospel to save the people, no matter how different they are. You and I, we are different. We look alike, but we are different. Glory be to God. We are so different. So, God used the same gospel. It is one gospel. Hallelujah. So, God used that gospel to pull us to Himself. Hallelujah. And he orchestrated the circumstances that led to the salvation of those people. But his messengers had to, full, to faithfully deliver the message. Some will say if salvation is totally of the Lord, then he will save them. He is going to save them. God will save you. And we don't have to do anything. And says when God saves you or heals you, He heals you completely, not halfway, quarter way. But fully, we are saved and healed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So He saved and we don't have to do anything that is the pers hallelujah the perversion of scriptures god naturally means of saving people is to use his servants to proclaim as a mouthpiece we are to proclaim the ways of salvation make the part straight for his coming at 16 verse 17 to those he, he, he intends to say for those who we called if god do not call you you will not come if god do not call you you will not come we should seek every opportunity to proclaim the gospel hallelujah go out in the fields in the highways and the by ways tell someone some may shun you some might listen some might come and some might run away it doesn't matter make sure you do the right thing proclaim the gospel both through words and through our lives hallelujah paul and his firm were probably looking for men to preach to but saints, man is running away from their purpose. So God is raising up the woman. If you look around in many churches, there are mostly women in the church. Where are the men? Most of them are in prison and a few are on the earth. Hallelujah. Because they run away from their purpose. This is God crying out to his disciple. If you love me, feed my sheep if you love me feed my sheep they run away because god knows the future man don't know what god does hallelujah glory to god so man is running away from their purpose hallelujah glory be to god it would have been countered to Paul, hallelujah, his background to teach women about spiritual matters, hallelujah. But if he had been operating to that basic, he would have missed this opportunity to explain the gospel of this small group of women by the river 
and yet this was how God intended to start the church in Europe. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The lesson for us is not to despise any person. You hear these things. We are not to despise any person as unimportant because we are all one in God's sight. Let God be the judge of all things saints. We can easily think this is this person is not a key person. We get eye minded, boastful, pride. We think we are up there. Hallelujah. While we are God's footstool, we are nothing. Hallelujah. So we're not supposed to despise any person thinking they are not worthy. Because God used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. <laughs> Hallelujah. God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Hallelujah. It would have been a waste of time to share with him or her. Not so. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. Hallelujah. And the base things of the world and despise God has chosen of saints the things that are not that is might nullify the things that are that no man should boast before God first Corinthians 1 27 to 29 says we must only boast in the Lord not boast against our brothers and sisters no boast in the Lord by telling the lost by telling even Christian by telling everyone about the Lord hallelujah boast in him brag about the Lord not boast on your brothers and sisters hallelujah so Paul and Silas bore witness not only by their proclamation are they proclaiming the gospel verbally but also they were an example their right and being but their right has been violated yes their back were ripped open by the rods that beat them and they were thrown into the stocked in prison but rather than complaining they sang hymns hallelujah they sang hymns worship they worship the lord they worship the lord they worship saints the devil is scared of a worshiper the devil is scared of a worshiper. So Paul and Silas, they worship, they sing songs of praise the whole time. They had faith. They believed that God will come and save them. And they prayed. Acts 16 verse 25. If their focus had been on their circumstances or their own will, being... As soon as the prison door flew open, they would have said, Go for it. It serves you right. Hallelujah. You barbarians. Glory be to God, they would have said that. But their focus was not on themselves. It was on glorifying God and seeing other people no matter how 
undeserving experience God saving grace work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I remember, you know, one years ago, I was visiting this church and all the time, every Sunday, this mad person, he would have come in the church and he walked all the way up to the altar. And one of the pastors there were ashamed or afraid or he was scornful to just stretch out his hands and take the offering. And this man, I'm telling you, he was a madman. He came every Sunday and he gave his offering. It doesn't matter how much it was. It could be a $10 or it could be whatever it is. But that pastor was scornful to just stretch out his hand. Because the man was a little bit smelly. He was in dirty clothes. And he was homeless. He didn't have anyone. But he knew God. He knows God. I don't know what had happened to that man. Hallelujah. And I don't know if he was baptized younger. But baptized yes or baptized no. I am telling you. That man will be in heaven. When the rapture and the role is called up yonder, that man will be in heaven until that pastor leave and another pastor take over. And this mad person is still come and through his offering. Every Sunday just the same. But that pastor he stretched out his hand all the time and he received that man coin in his palm so you know character and you know a true man of god we are not above the insane ones or the homeless ones or not because you have more you must act that way because it take a million years to build something but it take but a moment to tear it down and this is what Paul and Silas is showing you so we need to, to not be I minded or boast or prideful hallelujah because God used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God used that insane person, homeless, dirty clothes person, to come in the church to show you, to show up the skeletons of that pastor. Hallelujah. And God let that man come in the church to show you how honorable the other pastor was. Hallelujah. So we're not to look down on anyone. Hallelujah. Don't focus on the circumstances. That man knew he is insane, dirty, and homeless, and hungry. Rain wetting, sun burning. He has no shoes. He has no clothes. But he has God. God used that man to wake up that church. He knows God. He believed that there is a God. And I am telling you. If he is not baptized or if he is, he is going to heaven and many will be lost. Many will be lost. I am telling you. Glory be to God. And I'm closing short, shortly since because my sermon tonight, this afternoon is very long. But, hallelujah. 
So, so I'm saying to you, don't miss the application if you are treated unfairly. You are probably, probably being a major opportunity for witness. You, if you rejoice in the Lord, and keep your focuses on the salvation of those who are mistreating you they're just writing down their names in hell Hallelujah. because god sees and he knows your life and your words can lead them to the savior your actions focus is on yourself getting right or getting revenge no you will miss the mark you will miss your opportunity hallelujah hallelujah glory be to god you will miss your opportunity hallelujah glory be to god so don't miss don't mess with others or i should say myself call your own name saints don't with don't mess with me hallelujah god picked me god picked you saints don't care what you think about me or i don't care how you treat me hallelujah God still have his hands on me. He have his hand on you and I. Hallelujah. You might not like me. You might not like how I dress or how I look. But God still have his hands on me. God have his hands on you, saints. Hallelujah. And he loves us. He loves me. Hallelujah. With an everlasting love, let me tell you something, saints, about God and His amazing grace. Don't mess up your future. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't mess up your future to judge my past. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You hear what I don't, what I am saying, don't mess up your tomorrow trying to look in my yesterday. My yesterday is gone. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mind your own business, saints. Work out your own salvation. Hallelujah. And my business is my business. Your business is your business. Glory be to God. So don't mess up your tomorrow trying to tear down my yesterday. God picked me and he loves me. Hallelujah. Say it. God chooses you. He loves you. So don't miss the mark. Don't miss your opportunity. Satan seek to ward the gospel by his subtle strategy. But Satan don't have any new strategy. He used the same old trick when God created us or renewed the mind. Hallelujah. To tread up on scorpions and devil. Sometimes Satan will use outright aggression against the Lord's people. Such as unjust beating and in, hallelujah, imprisonment. Glory be to God. But is more dangerous tragedy because this more settled. Hallelujah. It is more subtle and is not aggression, but alignment 
these men are born servants of the most high god who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation at 16 verse 17 we are still on these were perfectly true words why would paul get irritated paul gets irritated because we don't like demons we don't play with demons demons can be transferred so we have to cast them out hallelujah we have to cast them out we're not going to dilute god words we're going to tread upon scorpions and devil and tear them down out of out of, out of the high places hallelujah and send them back to where they belong this is why paul got angry he got irritated hallelujah if the girl had been shouting out a half truth i can see why paul would be upset but why was he upset with her shouting out the truth Hallelujah. Paul wasn't upset with her. Paul was upset with the demon inside of her that aggravate his spirit. As Paul put it, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, he didn't want any advantage taken of him by Satan because he was not ignorant to his schemes glory be to god we shouldn't be ignorant to satan's scheme because satan has no new trick but to kill steal and destroy hallelujah glory be to god to take you from the path the, the the rocky road of christ onto that smooth road of fire one of satan's subtle satan's subtle strategy is to align himself with the truth he shows as if he's light when he is darkness hallelujah hallelujah but god always show his show him up because god always use his vessels to rebuke the devil will be to god god always use you god always make you aware of something that is is spiritual something spiritual is close by something irritates you because god comes with peace god comes with the true light god comes with holiness so when something is not right god causes you to feel it or we wake up the hinner man the fire starts to burn in you he wakes up the hinner man hallelujah within within you Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So he is the author of lie, the devil. He is doing in or day through the Mormon church, declaring itself to be just another evangelical denomination when they say we are the one with you we believe just as you do oh what do you believe in christ i believe in christ jesus i believe in the father son and the holy spirit in jesus name hallelujah glory be to god hallelujah we are christian saints the world wrongly think that their message is different than the true gospel hallelujah so saints stay focused in the lord hallelujah stay focused in the lord hallelujah glory be to god the gospel always centers on the person of Jesus Christ and on faith in him alone 
as the way of salvation. God is the only way, the truth and the life. God is the only way to the Father. You cannot go to the Father but through Christ Jesus. You can't go to the third floor until you go to the first floor. You cannot go to the Father except through Christ Jesus. And your faith and your holiness. Paul gospel always centered on Jesus Christ and him crucified. First Corinthians 2 verse 2. The Christ he preached is the Christ revealed in the Old Testament and the gospel. Yes, that's not. That note is explain the way of salvation. Both to Lydia and her group and to the Philippian jailers, glory to that, and is also <clears throat> verse 16, Acts 16, verse 14, and 32. People need to adequate understanding the order to believe they must know who Jesus is and what he claimed. The Jesus that Paul proclaimed is clearly eternal God in the human flesh who came to bear on the cross. Hallelujah. The just penalty that God requires us of our sins. He thought that we are justified as a gift by his grace through redemption. That is Christ Jesus, Romans 3 verse 24. He, he plainly states, says, glory to God, to the one who does not work but believe in him who is justified. The ungodly, his faith is reckoned as righteousness, Romans 4 verse 5. Hallelujah, Jesus. Romans 4 verse 5. There are some evangelical circles who that since salvation is by faith alone, that tell people that they must accept Jesus, not only the Savior, but also the Lord. Hallelujah. It is it to mix faith and word. But Paul told the jailer, believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved once you believe saved. Once you believe, um, Acts 16, verse 31. When he had you, your household, he means that the same person applied to his household if they would believe in the Lord Jesus. They too will be saved. Hallelujah. Once you believe, saints, there is no such thing as a proof of salvation based on someone else's faith. No, your own faith, not someone else's faith. You can't rely on someone else's faith. You have to rely on your own faith, your own walk with Christ. Hallelujah. But you, you can Come to Jesus as the Savior and make his Lordship an optional package to consider later. No, come now, not later. If you refuse the Father, saints, if you refuse the Son of Man, the Lord will refuse you. Jesus will refuse you in front of his Father. Don't you think so, saints? His word says it. If you refuse the Father, if you refuse Jesus, he will tell you, I know you not. 
in front of the Father. Hallelujah. You think Jesus is a weakling and he doesn't know all things? He said, I and the Father are one. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. You think the all-seeing God don't know everything? You think you can just run, come to Christ at the end? Hallelujah. God call young people while they are strong. So they can have dreams and visions and the whole to prophesy. Prophesy over the young. Hallelujah. Making any sense? Hallelujah. When you're cold and gray and beat out, what will you tell the Lord? Hallelujah. What will you tell the Lord? What will you tell the Lord? When you're old and beat out and can't even lift up your hand to praise the Lord, good. What will you tell the Lord? When God has been calling and knocking on the hearts, and you wouldn't let him in you are in your heart, what will you tell the Lord? Hallelujah. What will you tell the Lord? Come saints, just as you are, come young. The Lord will clean you up, teach you how to talk, live and act. The Lord will clean you up. He will manifest through you. He will use you. He will cause you to draw other sinners unto him. Hallelujah. Saints, come. This is not time for a joke. And before you get baptized, you need to get counseling from the pastor. More than one counseling too. So the pastor can teach you the words. And then you get baptized. You don't go and get baptized and run away. You get counseling so God can evict you and then you go and get baptized. Hallelujah. We don't want no sheep going astray. We are not running any jokes for Christ. Because every pastor. Hallelujah. Have to have an account for all he baptized. So you will not get the pastor in any trouble. If you are not serious, go. Oh. If you are serious, come to Christ. Come to Christ just as you are. Come to the counseling meeting so the pastor can teach you the words step by step and then you can get baptized hallelujah come to jesus <gasps> hallelujah the songwriter says all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely give come just as you are saints with faith and obedience as you mature from babe hallelujah as a Christian from drinking milk unto eating our food. God will hide you when you are a babe so you can drink milk and get mature into mighty men and women of Christ. Hallelujah. So when God removes that covering and you come out from hiding, you are eating our food. You are ready to assassinate the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The evidence that these converts submit to Jesus, Savior, the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord is seen in their obedience through baptism. Hallelujah. And in the good deeds that follow their faith. Acts 16 verse 15, Acts 33 and Acts 34. We've seen God works 
providentially to draw very different people to himself he does it through the same gospel message saints proclaiming by his servants hallelujah proclaiming by his servants i'm going to give you some scripture saints acts 11 verse 18 acts 2 verse 8 to 9 philippians 1 verse 9 verse 29 hallelujah God opened the hearts of some to respond in faith, even though Lydia was a religious woman who feared God. We should fear God, not man. God said, fear not. We should fear God, not man. Hallelujah. She was not converted. She did not have it in herself to believe in the gospel of Christ. So why come? You see, saints, why you, you're not supposed to play around with these people? If they don't come to your counseling meeting before baptism, don't baptize them. Hallelujah. So now she, Lydia, uh, begin to fear God because all the meeting with Paul and so on, she didn't get converted that upset paul hallelujah that upset paul you don't want to baptize these people and they run away because you will have to stand on account for all the sheep shepherd have a burden to bear whoa be careful of the woe be careful of the woe sir saints be careful of the walls. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God opened our hearts to respond to the things spoken by Paul. Acts 16 verse 14. Many is, if not all, in our household has believed but she, since they confessed their faith in baptism. Verse 16. Acts 16 verse 15 hallelujah the jailer and his family also believed and were baptized Acts 16 to 34 that is always the order in the book of Acts believe not many pastors like to read the book of Acts and not many pastors like to read the book of Ezekiel for some reason I don't know Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the book of Acts, believe first. Believe first, then baptize as a public confession of faith. Says you see why people need to come. Baptism counseling meeting to be sure to be called, hallelujah, to be convicted and to believe. And then baptism as an open or public confession of faith. The New Testament is clear that if we believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, it is not because we are brilliant. Hallelujah. Because since bachelor's, doctorate, all those PhD, hallelujah, associate's degree will not take you to heaven. Will not. If you believe and live a holy life, draw people to Christ because he didn't call you for himself, then you will be saved by the fire and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So you don't have to be brilliant. Oh, she's brighter. Oh, he's brighter. No. Title. We all have to die one day and the title will not be on your headstone. 
Hallelujah. Bishop so and so will not on the headstone. Prophet so and so will not on the headstone. Evangelist so and so will not on the headstone. It will be Sir, Madam so and so. Hallelujah. So brilliant. If you are brilliant, it will not save you as to make that decision. It is because God graciously opened the heart to respond, saving faith in the gift of God. Acts 11, verse 18. Hallelujah. Acts 11, verse 18. Others reject the gospel because of the hardness of their heart. They harden their hearts. There were some in this story, saints, who could have met God, but they missed him. Hallelujah, they were the foolish virgin. They didn't keep oil in their lamp, or they didn't keep their lamp keep bur burning. They were dry, so they have to shun themselves to go and look oil where there is no oil. When they came back, the oil left. Jesus Christ gone. Seek him early while he may be found. Saying, seek him early while he may be found. Don't miss him. The owner of a slave girl missed God because of their greed. Because of his greed, their greed and anger towards Paul for taking away the source of the slave of their the slave girl which was their income but woe unto those who gain the world but lose their only soul woe unto those who gain the world but lose their own soul. Hallelujah. Acts 16 verse 19. They also laid to the city of. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Trumping up false charges about Paul and Silas. The city magistrate could have listened to Paul's defense which surely could have included the gospel but they missed their opportunity to meet god god leave hallelujah because of the good politician they wanted to keep their constituencies happy hallelujah the crowd in philippi missed the meeting god miss meeting god because they swallowed the accusation of the salvation. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And of the slave owner within hearing Paul's message, thinking carefully about the probably some anti Semitic. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And they reject. Paul and his gospel. It is like they are saying, crucify Jesus, but give us born of born of us. They're rather a thief and a murderer over the gospel. Hallelujah. So they rejected Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Cannot blame God for not opening their heart to the gospel. They are responsible for their own sins. Hallelujah. They have a reptilian mind. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So they perish because they are darkened in their own understanding, excluding from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them darkness they are very dark the lord shine light through the darkness but it comprehended not 
the Lord walked with those two disciples, but they didn't know it was Jesus until they realized it. Jesus gone. This is what is happening to the to the to humanity. They will want to come when it is too late. Saints, repent. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Repent and live an holy life. We are not perfect. We are flesh and blood. But live the best life in Christ. Be holy. Draw others. Tell someone about Christ. Hallelujah. Don't harden your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Don't harden your heart. Hallelujah. To impurity with greediness. Do not harden your heart. Do not practice in impurity with greediness. We should be pure. We should be holy. So the Holy Spirit can flow freely. So we can help the pastor to make his work easier. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I am closing saints. Ephesians 4, 18 to 9. Teen. Ephesians 4. 18 to 19. Glory be to God. I pray that you all be all right. I pray for the children. I pray for the sick. I pray for the indifferent. I pray for those who need a mending heart. I pray for those who need Christ so the Lord can fill you with his glory. I pray for myself. I pray for the leaders, the teachers, the nurse, the doctors, the police and soldiers. I pray for all pastors. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray for humanity. The cattle, glory be to God. And I also pray for the herbs in the earth. In the name of Jesus. And I pray against all that is not of God. Hallelujah. I pray against those who are joining forces to start a war. I pray against those who are poisoning the foods and those who are playing around with the bank system. I pray in the name of Jesus we will have a sound mind and a happy life. I pray the Lord will hide his people in this season and for what is to come. I pray in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Saints, hug a child, hug someone, tell someone you love them. Hallelujah. Don't forget to pray. Don't forget to read the word because you read the word, you are empowered, you are strengthened. You read the word, you draw the Lord close to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter what people say or what it looks like, saints, trust in the Lord. With all your heart, all your soul, and lean not unto the, your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge of a father. Amen. Remember, woman, put your husband first. Respect. Sometimes shut him out. We talk too much sometimes. Shut him out. Stop nagging. You, you chasing away your husband. And husband, don't be dictators. Hallelujah. Respect your wife. Love them as the church, as Christ loved the church. And two, it takes two to make a quarrel. Sometimes you can just leave the house, get some fresh air, and come back. All right? So that peace will reign. Woman, cook for your husband. No? Maybe you haven't cooked in a long time because you're so busy. But on your day off or off of the day, make a sweet meal for your husband. Maybe his birthday is coming up or something. Do something special. Surprise him. Hallelujah. Surprise him. 
Glory be to God, you're wearing a gown in the house. When Sister Jane is wearing. Hallelujah. Huh? When Sister Jane is wearing the mind control out there. <laughs> Why? Come on, says. Huh? Keep your keep your marriage alive. Keep your marriage alive. Glory be to God. Hmm? Sometimes you can put saints. It's your husband you're doing it for now. It's not an outsider, you know. Put on a little soul. Hallelujah. Was with your husband. Hug him tight. Hallelujah. Tease him up a little. Hallelujah. Because if you let the outsider, hmm, you might not get him back. Because where peace is, that's where his heart will be. And where food is, that's where his gut will be. And where love is, that's where he will be. So stop yapping and start doing. Start showing that you care. So when he go out there, you can say, my wife, my wife, my wife. You ready to that? Hallelujah. Sweet up your husband, says, Come on. Husband, sweet up your wife. Hallelujah. You ready to that? I love you with the love of Christ. I love you with the love of Christ. Jesus love you too, saints. Uh, yes, I am not married, never been, but I would like to be someday on the Lord's timing. But I am saying for the marriage couple, hallelujah, come on, woman, sexy up in the house for your husband now, and stop being a grumpy old troll. Hmm? If he's angry at you for something, surprise him with something. Keep your relationship alive. It's three in a relationship, not four. It's three. God above the man and the woman beneath the husband to submit. Hallelujah. When the husband and the wife is making love, God is in the midst of them. Hallelujah. When a husband finds a wife, he finds a good thing and he obtains favor with the Lord. Glory be to God. Isn't that so? It's best to be married than to be burning whole with how many people is burning turning skeleton bone. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. But other than that, if he is not of God, you cannot be an equal yoke. Hallelujah. You can never be an unequal yoke, baby girl, baby boy. I'll catch you. Shalom.